Guess what I use to create these beautiful nails? Using the reverse French method, I'll also show you how to custom mix a color. It's not acrylic. It's not hard gel. Combining the best qualities of both creates my new easy gel. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start by buffing this up while we're talking. I have been doing nails for about 35 years, been educating for almost as long. And I love acrylic. That's all that was out 35 years ago. And then about 10, 15 years later, gel came out. That's a build your gel, hard gel. There was no gel polish at the time. And I have been educating, of course, with the two products that we had. And you know, acrylic, if you've ever tried it, you know, <laughs> it's hard. And, and hard gel is hard too. It takes dedication to learn how to do those things, but when you get it right, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's amazing. And then the hybrid gels came along and it's sort of the elements of acrylic and gel combined. The beauty of both, which is acrylic sort of creates this putty that you can shape, but it dries fast. So that's what makes it difficult. Whereas gel, you can keep shaping it. It runs a little depending on the consistency that you have the viscosity viscosity and then it kind of moves a little but it doesn't cure until you put it under the lamp that's what this is all about it combines the elements of both of those things the best parts of them together to create the hybrid gel and that's what i finally have put together so when hybrid gels came on the market i was actually quite excited about them i've done several videos on them showing how wonderful they can be for teaching so i am very excited to work with a hybrid gel, especially when it comes to educating. So I do have a very thin layer, a very thin of product on here, but it's a nude pink, so it's gonna blend very nicely. You can't even really see it. If you are having difficulty with either ones, like I say, acrylic or the gel, this is going to make your life easier. So if you are learning and you always wanna to move to the acrylic or the hybrid gel, or the gel, hard gels, you can start here and it can give you that shaping and give you the feel of constructing. Oh, let me just break this open and give you the feel of building it. But nobody's rushing you, right? It's going to be much easier with something like this. OK, so this is my new easy gel kit. I'm going to show you what you get in the kit. So I've got my brush. Now, my easy gel brush is designed. They're specific to this type of product. You want it a little bit stiffer because you want the bristles to be able to push the product down. And you need that because of the type of product that it is. And the other side is the spatula so that you can pull the product out. And in my case, I have something very special why I wanted the spatula on the other end. Okay, and you don't need that. Okay, and I've got these two, I'll explain. And we have got, oh, I didn't mention, did I mention the little, oh. <laughs> this just, it's friction fitted, I guess. It just got stuck in there. <laughs> this is little lint-free pads that you'll want to use. These are the files, and I'll just dump out. Now, these are the three colors that we are going to play with. Oh, and you get some forms as well, so we can create those nails. Okay, so let's just get going on this. Those are the files. Okay, before I started filing, I did cleanse every one of these nails and sanitized. So I have buffed them with an e-file, but if you don't have an e-file, I have supplied files in the kit to do that. And you want to use the medium or the coarse. And how you do that is, if you're using the coarse file, just go over quite gently and moving it over the entire nail. And you can use the rounded end to go into those little areas and get them snug right up against the cuticle. You can push the cuticles back at the same time, or you can pre-push that cuticle back, okay? And you can do that to each and every finger and make sure that it's ready to go, okay? That's if you're using the files that are in the kit. Okay, and the next step, we wanna use a product called Bridge. And the Bridge is going to bridge that gap between your natural nail and or if you have product on there to hanging on to the product you're about to put on. Now, when you put bridge on, you want to almost like burnish it in. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. Take your brush and make sure you get every little spot, but really make sure it's in there. It's basically acting as a primer. Just make sure it's in every little spot. 
This is your adhesion. It's very liquidy. It's not like a gel consistency. It's quite liquidy. And like with any primer, don't oversaturate and don't overuse. And we want to get that into your little lamp for about 60. Okay, once cured, we want to put a form on. We're going to do a reverse French. That is much easier nail to do than the traditional French, especially with a product like this. You're really going to find this a lot easier. When you do the traditional, there's really no room for error. <laughs> when you do the reverse, you can get away with a lot more error and still come out with a really good looking nail. Okay, so we are going to use Susie's Pink Mix. How I developed that was, when I had choices of acrylic or acrylic powder, I would have the warm pink or the cool pink were usually the choices we had back in the 80s and the 90s. And I would combine the cool pink and the warm pink together to create that color that I was looking for. I wanted a little opacity and I wanted a little see-through. I wanted the elements of both. So by combining the lighter, cool colored pink that was very quite clear with an op more of an opaque pink, mixing the two together created the exact color I was looking for. It can hide all the imperfections on the natural nail plate, but still see through enough to be able to see its beauty of the natural nail coming through. So that's what I have here is my combination of Susie's Pink Mix. And that's what I called it actually, Susie's Pink Mix. So I will take a little bit of this. And that's why I like a spatula. Actually, when I was designing this, I had the choice between the tubes or putting it in the pot. And I prefer the pot because the tubes I find very hard to squeeze and it does take a lot more time. And I really wanted the easy accessibility of being able to scoop it right out of the pot. And I will place this bead on here. So I've got my alcohol in my gorgeous jewel of the nail dish. And I will get myself a little pad here so I can release and clean my brush on there. And with my brush being dipped into the alcohol, I will then use that to move the product around. And this is the beauty of hybrid gel. There's no rush. Like acrylic, it's staying in the proper ratio that you need. And like gel, it won't cure until you put it under the light. That is the beauty of this stuff. It just makes it so easy. See how I'm placing it where I want here? And I'm just taking my time. And if it gets a little sticky, just go back into your alcohol, release, like you would acrylic and monomer, right? And then you go back onto here and you start molding it and putting it where you want. No rush. So if someone comes to the door and brings me some mail, which I love because I get stuff in the mail all the time, we can stop the video cameras and go and then we could get sidetracked and have a snack and then we could pet the cats, whatever. This will still be in the same position when we got back. I almost didn't have to put a form on right away, but I want to extend it a little bit. I really like that look of the extended nail bed with the French. So I won't get into too much educating. Well, I guess I could talk a little bit about it. When you're doing the French, the reverse, make sure you've got the gullies on the side that are free and open for whatever color you're putting down next, right? On that smile line. So you wanna make sure you have lots of room for your little product to get up there for those little smiley peaks. That's the beauty of this. See that, I can turn it sideways. If this was acrylic, it would be hardening on you and you wouldn't get a chance to shape it. If this was gel, it might be falling or moving. It's not gonna stay in the same spot because gel has a nice viscosity to it. It moves around with you. But this is just staying in that position. So you can keep correcting it and correcting it until you are actually where you want it to be. And this is looking pretty good. But that's the beauty of this stuff. I could even take it off if I want and put it back in there and I can scoop more and put it on, which I'm gonna do actually because I do need some more on here. 
But look at, I've got the cuticle, nice and smooth. That's the number one thing when you're learning how to do acrylic. Don't get me wrong, I love acrylic. But when you're learning to do it, if you're getting frustrated with the acrylic, which you will, <laughs> guaranteed, everybody does. The hardest part to master is that cuticle area. And why? Because acrylic will harden up in there before you get a chance to smooth it away. Before you learn that craft, it'll harden up. Gel will fall into the cuticle before you get a chance to really work why it shouldn't go that far. So this stuff makes it so that it's like I say, it just goes where you put it. It's not moving at all. It only moves when you tell it to when you have got a brush with alcohol on it. And that difficulty is the exact reason why I created the Low Odor Odorless Susie's Clean Acrylic because it gives you that time to play with the product before it cures. And that's why I like this stuff too. Whenever I'm designing it, I'm always thinking of that learning curve to make it easier. Okay, that's looking really nice. Okay, I'm just gonna move it this way for a little bit. Sometimes you just need to see this angle, especially when you're doing yourself, right? When you're working on clients, you're always working on this angle. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. So I am going to nuke that little guy for 60 seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna get the black and the white together. This is one thing I absolutely love doing, creating my own custom shades. So as you can see, you've got three colors to choose from. Mixing them gives a variety of different shades. So I'm going to mix some white, and that's why I included the spatula, so you can easily access your product. If you don't want to get any white into the black, then you should clean that off. Now I'm going to make a beautiful gray color. Now if you know much about mixing, especially when you're mixing a color with a stronger pigment, you don't need as much of the darker color as you do the lighter color. I want to make a nice, soft gray. And it might have been a little too much black. So I'm going to put my black aside, get the white back, and I'm going to just release any of the gray on there. And I'm going to clean this one more time. Now, I could have mixed it before, but the reason why I didn't, if I had an extra jar, I could have, but I didn't before because if I put it on my little tray here and then I got all the dust going, then it would, you know, I didn't want to get dust in my product, right? So I'm going to get a little bit more white. I'm going to do my whole hand, so I'm glad I started off with a small amount, then I just keep adding the white. It's easier to add the black to it to find the color you want than starting with black. <laughs> blending it well because I do want one solid gray color but if you want kind of a marbly look you don't even have to blend it that well just make sure you mix nice and slow and pushing the product together so that you're releasing bubbles and not adding any okay I'm very happy with that color that's pretty right very pretty oh, I like that now I'm just going to release it off of my little mixing paddle and I'm going to clean it because that'll end up in my sleeve for sure. Okay. Now I do want to leave it open because I'm going to use my paddle to scoop it up. You don't want to use your brush to scoop it up because it might misshape your brush too much. So that's why you really want to rely on that paddle. Okay, so I'm going to look at this free edge. Now my form, it's very hard to shape that edge there with the form on. So if you want, just take it off and you can reform it again. So what I'm gonna to try to do is just make sure this is nice and crisp. Now, this is an optional move. You don't have to do this, but I was counting on doing this. I didn't really pay as much attention to that shape. And I think I always do this anyway, just to crisp it up, just to make sure those smile lines are really smiling, very crispy. Now, if you're doing this with a brand new file, just make sure all files are different. 
These are brand new, but I find they don't really have to score the edge, but you know, be careful of that because if it's sharp, you could cut. So if you're using a new file, just score the edge with another file that's taking another file and just scoring that edge. So when you put this edge onto, you're not going to cut the skin. Your first fresh file. Okay, I think that's pretty, pretty. Okay, so we just want to dust that off. Remember, a gel, acrylic, none of them like dust. <laughs> so you have to reform, or you can use your old form that you took off. It's just up to you if you want to do that or not. And sometimes you can shape it with the form on it. Okay, so I'm just going to redo that little form. Okay, so now I'm going to scoop up with my little paddle, and I'm going to place it on my form. Now, just a little trick. When you're doing a French, as long as you have the pink, which is the nail bed color, whatever nail bed color you're doing, make sure it's high enough. If it's quite high, then you can slap the free edge color on any way you like, actually, <laughs> and just get it in there. And when you're filing it, you will sculpt your beautiful smile line will just come to be. It's already in there, right? So here's the beauty of hybrid gel. You just take your time and sculpt where you want it to be. Maybe that's a little long. I don't think I'm gonna go super long on these actually, but I will say whenever you're doing a darker color, like clear is the easiest thing to cure whenever you're working with a hard gel, a gel, even soft gel nail polishes, darker colors are harder to get all the way through to cure because the light has to go all the way through it. So when you're doing anything with the darker colors, I've added a little bit of black, you wanna go thinner and cure in layers. Same with gel polish, right? You cure, I would rather do three or four thinner layers, cure each one in between rather than three or two thicker layers. That goes with hybrid gels as well. So I will do this first layer on the thinner side. See how I'm just kind of pushing it around? I'm gonna push it into the little smiley lines there. Make sure it's in there. And I'm flattening it down. So it's trying to be even. So when I nuke it, the light will be able to penetrate through the whole thing and cure it properly. It's so the whole thing with gel. It's always a curing issue. So you have lots of time to create and play and figure out your design. There's no hurry. So it really does take the anxiety, you might say, the stressful feeling of trying to create before your product is curing up. That's really what the hybrid gel lends the artist to do, is just gives you some time. Okay, so I'm almost ready to nuke this and I'm just playing around with it. So sometimes it can be bad. If you're a perfectionist, you can sort of play around with it too much and you might never actually come to the point where you're like, okay, I'm going to nuke it. You just, sometimes you just got to call it. Sometimes for perfectionists, perfection never comes. <laughs> so you may end up never getting it done, right? And I think that's what I'm doing at this point is I'm just playing with it because I can make it perfect because there's no time restraint whatsoever. That's what I'm doing. But everything I'm doing right here now, I can be all done in the filing, right? I mean, I don't have to get this picky. I'm just being silly at this point. Okay, I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see. Now the pink is extra high. Remember we built it a little bit higher so we can slam the free edge color on whatever way you want. And I'm making the layer of the gray on the thinner side so we can make sure that it's fully cured properly before we cure it. Okay, so we are going to stick it under the light. You want to get about 60 seconds. And if you find that your lamp is not curing it, cure it a little bit longer to make sure that it is cured. You want to tap it so you can hear it. Now it will have a sticky layer on it, but you can still hear. It's done. So I'm now going to take the form off. And if you want, you can even actually save your little form. And now you can cure it a little bit easier because you don't have the form under it now. So when you cure the second layer, you're just going in and curing it right through. I'm going to smash that 
hybrid gel on there everywhere just to show you. I was sort of following this French line at first, just make sure it was in there. And I'm just gonna sort of slap it on. Just so when you can filing, we'll see the beautiful French line start to appear as you're filing. It starts to come to life. It's just gorgeous. Okay, that's so pretty. There's the sound of being geared. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the rest. Then we will sculpt them all up. Okay, I've been sculpting away, but I did wear a mask the entire time that I was doing that. Caramel, we were just talking about sculpting is application and sculpting is also with the file, hand file or e-file, whatever you're using. So I am gonna continue sculpting with the hand file because I've sculpted them on there by sculpting on with the product. And now I'm gonna you know, fine tune it by sculpting it with the hand file. One thing that's about hybrid gels and uh, hard gels is they're a little softer of a product so it makes the filing and the shaping a little bit easier than if you're filing acrylic. So filing it by hand completely is completely doable. Doing the whole thing filing by hand is doable when you're talking hybrid gels and even gels. Not that acrylic isn't doable it's just a harder product so it just takes a little more elbow grease that's all. So I am just finding my shape in here. I'm going quite almondy and pointy, but I'm doing the, the ends of them where they are kind of a, a rounder end than I normally do. Normally I go very, very pointy, but I'm just trying something a little bit different. It's quite pretty. I actually quite like it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm really fine tuning that down to that point or very, very round end and getting rid of any bulk. It's a very delicate nail. It's quite beautiful doing with the coarse file right now because I'm sculpting and taking away most of the bulk. It's looking pretty good. Once I get the shape here, what I do with the e-file is, this is a um, bit where I take away bulk. It seems to be good near the cuticle and the apex seems to be really good. I'm just gonna take away the bulk from the apex to the free edge. I'm gonna thin that out a little bit and take it off. Just don't want that to be too bulky. So you can see I'm just doing it on the gray part basically. And then I will look at it this way. Oh, that's looking really good. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go around the cuticle just to make sure there's a nice separation. That's the beauty of custom nails. is you make sure that's that nice separation. Even if you're doing like jelly tips, make sure there's a nice separation. And then I will flip it over underneath and just give it a nice little smoothing out. Sometimes there might be a little more bulk in here to take out because I may have taken the form off Remember we did the reverse shape, so I crisped it up and then I reformed it. So I'm just sort of leveling it out between the two. Sometimes it can be a little missed, stepped or drop a little bit. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. And then I will take my fine file and make sure I go around the edges like that. And I'm just gonna round up that corner nicely to match the others. Like I say, usually I leave it to a point. But this time I'm going to go a nice soft round. Okay, and one little pro tip that I will do on every single set that I do, no matter what, no matter how smooth and perfect I think I've made it, I take my fine or medium arbor band and about if you're working with an e-file, about a five, six, or seven, somewhere in there, and I will go over the whole thing. This will make it so smooth, no lumps and bumps at all. And it's very minuscule, but when you're feeling with the finger, you can tell the difference. So for a very smooth nail and a very pro touch, I would do this every single nail. And when I don't do it, I notice the diff. 
And this is also a perfect uh, buff texture for the next application, which is your top coat. Okay, so I'm gonna dust it off. Before I do my top coat, I am just gonna make sure, I don't always do this and you don't have to do this depending on if you want to do it or not. <laughs> I'm just making sure there's, the camera can really focus in quite closely and you can see little dust in the cuticles. So this time I'm just making sure that I get it all out. Now, if you don't do it at the nail table, real life is when you're working, sometimes you may don't have enough time to do that. You will take your duster and you can do that, then put your top coat on. And then when you put the oil around the cuticle, it gets rid of all the dust anyway, so you don't have to get too crazy. Okay, with my new top coat, <laughs> it's called Reveal. And you guessed it, that's why I called it Reveal, because it's the last step before our reveal photos. That is beautiful. So pretty, let's check out the reveals. Okay, I don't wanna forget a little drop of oil. Got my new gingerbread cookies oil. Smells so nice. Okay, I have to say, I really love the Susie Mix pink. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the gray is beautiful. I love it. I could have even gone a little bit darker. I can't wait to check out the black. And I am going to mix the white and the pink, making a very opaque pink. Very soft. Oh, I can't wait to try that. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to put those forms on, because that is an art within itself. Check this video out. I'll see you there.